Hey, thanks for joining me. How are things going? For me, there are good days and there are bad. It's pretty fitting for what grief can do to someone. I'm doing my best to take it moment by moment. How about you? I sure hope you're doing things to stay balanced during all this pandemic grief. I know it's not easy, but hang in there. Seriously, hang in there. Do your best to take it moment by moment. At least for me, that's what's been the most helpful. Today I want to share a story with you about an experience I had recently going grocery shopping. Who would have guessed that going grocery shopping would be story worthy? But this experience really stood out. Before I go into the story, I want to offer an invitation to you. Normally, Grief Refuge is about doing workshops and retreats and having in-person experiences that are transformative, but we can't do that right now. So after a lot of contemplation and a lot of pondering, the only other alternative I could come up with was to do online grief support groups. So if you're in a place where the extra support sounds like something you need, please contact me through griefrefuge.com to inquire about joining a group. And also, I want to throw out there that because this podcast is really about stories and experiences of people encountering grief, if there's something that you want to share, if there's a story that you want me to express on this podcast, let me know. Contact me through griefrefuge.com also. I would love to share your story on this podcast. Thank you. And now for today's story. It's titled, That Time Tom Petty, Stevie Nicks, and the Police Helped My Grief. Written and narrated by yours truly. Today, I mustered up the courage to leave my home and get some groceries. It was my third week in a row for visiting the grocery store on a Thursday morning. I grabbed my wallet, phone, keys, and some sanitary wipes and headed out the door. My short drive to the store was embraced in silence. No radio, no podcasts, and no phone calls. Just me and my thoughts. Despite getting some lengthy sleep the night before, I noticed how tired I actually felt. I could feel the heaviness in my eyes. I noticed how my body felt so stiff. I felt so much tension in my neck. After sorting through some of the what's going on with me sensations, I realized a lot of what I was feeling was grief. And it was pandemic related. Just yesterday, my landlord sent an email notification that she'd be raising the rent. How incompassionate, I thought. Especially on April Fool's Day. Then I talked to my neighbor. And by the way, my neighbor and I share the same landlord. He's a chiropractor. He's now earning only 10% of what he was a month ago. His problems are currently much bigger than mine. After listening to what he's going through, I felt so sad. I had to excuse myself from the conversation to tend to my emotions. After sitting with the sadness for a while, I did feel a little bit better, and I moved on with my day. But this morning, all the grief felt like it had caught up with me. I was feeling so exhausted, and I was pretty sure that grief was the culprit. I pulled into the parking lot at the grocery store, I looked at the long line, and noticed how so many more people were wearing face masks as compared to last week. I then felt that wave of exhaustive grief hit me even harder. I spent 40 minutes waiting in line. While waiting, I tried to remind myself of how blessed I was to stand in warm sunshine. I also practiced gratitude, thanking the universe for my family having the financial means to buy groceries for the next week. While waiting in that line, I did what I could to counter the feeling of exhaustion 
caused by grief. I watched the father and son six feet in front of me exchange such a unique interaction. I stretched, I yawned several times. I did everything I could to just be more mindful and be in the moment. But the moment I pulled my phone out of my pocket and began to stroll, I realized I made a huge mistake. My news feed was full of COVID-19 news. I saw one article written in the LA Times and felt it was relevant to me, so I tried to read it just to stay informed and current on the latest information, but I just couldn't finish it. It was too depressing. By the time I got into the store, my spirits were pretty down. It was hard to focus. I was lucky to have a shopping list that actually could help provide some form of direction. To my surprise, the shelves were stocked. Everything on my list was available. I got to the checkout counter feeling slightly better but also hoping that my new social interaction with the checkout attendant would be fun and could actually help me feel better. And my luck continued. When we exchanged our hellos, I could tell she was putting out some positive vibes. We small talked for a moment, but then it got quiet. I wanted to keep talking, so I remembered a question I asked the checkout attendant just a week ago. I thought it was appropriate to ask her also. How many employees here do you think can juggle? I asked. Juggle? She replied. Yeah, like a percentage-wise, I said. Hey, uh, percentages are a bit of a trigger these days, she commented. I chuckled. Yeah, you're so right, I said. Percentages aren't a great thing to talk about right now. What I will tell you is that there's so many 80s songs that have lyrics very appropriate to what's all going on right now, she said. 80s songs? I asked, very surprised. Yeah, like, do you know the police? Our exchange quickly became a gift for my melancholy mood. Rather quickly, my buying groceries had turned into a game of Name That Tune. Every little thing she does is magic, and... I'll be watching you were the two songs that immediately came to mind. I spoke of the song titles, but with little confidence. And she remarked, you're getting closer. Well, quickly, I gave up. Don't stand so, don't stand so, don't stand so close to me, she sang. I immediately felt the muscles in my face rise upwards. And then I quickly realized I just smiled for the first time today. She took notice of my response and then quickly asked, Do you know Stevie Nicks? And I said, I only know Fleetwood Mac songs. I didn't really follow her solo career. So quickly, she already gave me the tune. Stand back, stand back, she blurted out. And for all you Stevie Nicks fans, sorry if I just butchered that because I don't know the song that well. But after she sang the song, my smile then turned into laughter. She could tell I was into it, so she said, I've got one more. You know Tom Petty, right? Three songs came to mind. I named them. And all were wrong. Don't come around here no more. She sang with a smile. And not as much as a country <laughs> twang to it. Well, the point is this lady was on a roll. Our name that tune game was really fun and I was highly entertained. But then just like that, our time was up. Name that 80s coronavirus tune was over and it was time for me to pay for my groceries and leave. We said our goodbyes and wished each other well. The moment I pushed my cart out in the parking lot, reality set back in. My life had returned back to the land of cautionary concern, not touching anything and staying as far away as possible from strangers. But the attendant who helped me today surely made my day. I was pretty overwhelmed with grief by the time I approached her, 
and she helped spark some light into an otherwise gloomy day. She also helped me tap into some joy, a warm feeling when I needed it most. To all of you who are putting out positive vibes during a time of immense grief, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Your joy and humor is really making a huge difference right now. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed today's story, and I sure hope it brought a smile to your face, if not a couple chuckles or laughs. It's the small things that are making a big difference these days, isn't it? I appreciate you listening to another episode of Grief Refuge Podcast, and like I said in the beginning, if you need extra support, reach out to me through griefrefuge.com. There's many different ways I can help. All you got to do is ask. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.